Hey, it's Paul. I made a blog post on async and away it's last month and I've never got around to making the video on it. A lot of people ask me all the time, Paul, you use async and await in your applications just about in every video. What on earth is it? Well, async is effectively another way to write promises. So we can use async and await to write code that looks synchronous, but actually it's resolving a promise and is asynchronous. Let's take a look at this in more detail. I'm going to run Ionic Serve to run the project in the browser, and then we'll make a simple app that involves a promise. So as you can see, we have a blank Ionic application. Then inside of our source pages, home.ts, I'm then going to make a function. That function will be called say hello, and the function will return a new promise. So we'll have a resolve and a reject. And all this promise is going to do is resolve the words, hello, but it's going to do that after three seconds. So there we have it. We have a function that's returning a new promise after three seconds. All it's saying is hello to the user. I'm going to hook into the ion view did enter lifecycle hook and we'll run say hello. You'll notice that right now we can run a dot then. And if we take the data, and simply log out the data to the console, we should get hello in our console. So our app has loaded and after three seconds, we should get hello and we did. So let's make the way that we interact with say hello in an asynchronous way. Perhaps the best way to show this would be to make a new provider. So let's make an Ionic G provider and we'll call it hello service. If we then add the hello service to our project, in app module, we can import from providers, hello service.ts, and then we can add hello service to the list of providers. Let's now take our hello function and move it to our hello service. For now, we can also get rid of the imports that we don't need. And then we can import from providers slash hello service. We can import and inject our hello service. So let's say private hello, hello service. And we can make a new function, but this time the function will be async. So let's say async get hello because we're getting the hello message and async functions have to use await. So await is just essentially the same as running this. But instead of saying dot then data is then logged out to the console. We could then say, we'll make this a constant and say greeting is equal to the resolved promise of this dot hello dot say hello. We no longer need the dot then call because the code after say hello will not be run until the promise is resolved. To prove this, let's make some console log statements. I'm going to say I'm only going to run after say hello is finished. Let's also console log the greeting. So when the view enters, let's start the countdown. It should be three seconds. So it will start a timeout and resolve the words hello. After three seconds, we should get the value inside of our homepage. After that, we'll log it out. And then we'll also prove that this code does not run until say hello is finished by saying I'm only going to run after say hello is finished. Let's take a look at how this executes inside of the browser. So make sure you've saved your file. And then inside of our Ionic app, we've just refreshed the page. And you can see we only get, I'm only going to run after say hello is finished after the promise is resolved. So it's essentially the same as doing this dot hello dot say hello dot then taking the data putting the data equal to greeting is equal to data. So let's make greeting up here and we'll say it's a string. Then we can log out the greeting and only then would we run the, this is only going to run after say hello is finished. So if we run this again, we should see the exact same result. We'd also have to get rid of the async call. And when this builds, we get nothing. Then we get hello. Then we get our I'm only going to run after say hello is finished. 
This allows us to refactor our code. And we can use the await async pattern to write cleaner code without getting into callback hell. Let's go over it one more time. So we'll have async get hello. Then we can make a value such as greeting equal to this dot hello dot say hello. And greeting will now be what's ever resolved by that promise when we add the keyword await. And then only things after await will be run. So this will be run in this order as this takes three seconds. After the three seconds, the code below will execute. And this takes three seconds because we've added a timeout of three seconds in the service. It would take for as long as it needs for the promise to resolve. So identical to dot then, but instead we're writing cleaner code. By using the await keywords here, we know that this code underneath is not executed until it's resolved or rejected. So I advise you to start using the async await pattern within your Ionic code and you will thank yourself for it because it makes your code that much more readable. If you'd like to learn more about async and other concepts, don't forget to check out the Learn Ionic 3 from Scratch course over at Udemy. Simply type it in to the search bar or check the description for a link. I've got a discount code running at the moment, so if you purchase it now, you'll get it while the course is super cheap. My name's Paul. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.